Hi everybody, so the warm weather is finally upon us and I'm getting plenty of emails from some of you asking if it's okay to wear your corset underneath your bathing suit. Some of you are, you know, getting ready for your spring vacation and some of you are already gearing up for summer and you want to be able to look curvy underneath your swimsuit. So you're wondering if it's okay for you to swim in your corset or get it wet and uh, whether swimming corsets actually exist. Speaking from my own experience, I generally don't recommend swimming in a corset. I'm not a particularly strong swimmer. I know how to swim Swim, but uh, people in my family are just, uh, we're not built to float in fresh water especially. And uh, some of my siblings can actually sit at the bottom of a pool. We sort of sink like a rock. Salt water is a little bit better. Uh, but I know that when I'm swimming, uh, when I'm doing laps and whatnot, I need to take really big full breaths. I need full mobility ability and uh, I cannot afford to have my rib cage restricted. So I prefer not to cinch when I'm in the water. I know that some other people are able to, uh, but my personal experience, I wouldn't. But if you're just frolicking on the shallow end of the pool or, you know, you're doing a photo shoot on the seashore or whatnot, then, you know, that might be a different story. I will say that there are a great number of custom corseteers who do not recommend that you wash your corset or you immerse it in water for any reason. So I would say that uh, if you have an off the rack corset that you're not particularly attached to and you wanna try swimming in it, that's fine. But if you have a custom couture corset, you know, check with your corseteer if, uh, if it's even made to do that. So why is it not a good idea for you to submerge in water while wearing your corset? There are a few different reasons. The biggest concerns that I hear generally are that these steel bones can rust. Uh, if you have any sort of fabric like silk, it can water stain. And if the fabric is not color fast, then it can bleed and fade. And uh, Joanne Peterson, the owner of Laughing Moon Mercantile, she also said that um, if you have two fabrics, if you have a corset that's made with more than one layer, and each layer is made from a different type of fiber, for instance, uh, a core layer of cotton and an outer layer of uh, wool suiting, then those have different shrink rates. And the difference can be even more stark if the fabric is not pre-washed, which many corseteers do not pre-wash their fabrics. So if you have uh, two unlike fabrics and you dunk the corset in water and it shrinks, you might end up with wrinkling or warping or bubbling of your corset. But 100 or 150 years ago, there were corsets being advertised that they could be washed on a regular basis and you know there wouldn't be a problem with that. So what is different about those antique corsets compared to modern ones? Well, firstly, a lot of antique corsets were made with a single layer of hardy cotton, so you didn't have to worry about different shrink rates or even different layers at all. And before the baleen whale became endangered species, and whaling was banned, obviously a lot of corsets were boned with baleen or they were boned with reed or bamboo. And what all these things have in common is that uh, reed is a plant that grows in marshland. Uh, they tend to grow in water very easily. And baleen obviously is the cartilage that grows in the jawline of the baleen whale. It's made to be in water. So when you're constantly washing those corsets, it actually helps to condition the reed or the whalebone. It helps keep them supple it helps them bend more easily. It's when these substances become dry that they become brittle and prone to snapping, which is likely where the rumor of like breaking bones came from. It was actually the discomfort and the splintering of the baleen that was the problem, not the breaking of human bones. And when the baleen was eventually replaced with steel, initially it was very thin strips of mild steel ribbon and mild steel can rust very quickly and easily. And actually uh, a couple of different corset styles came about where they had little slits or uh, deliberate gaps in the boning channels where the steel could be basically exposed. And what you could do when you are ready to actually wash your corset, you can remove the steel bones, wash just the fabric, let it dry, and then replace the bones so that it wouldn't have to necessarily touch the water. And also if the steel were to kink or break or rust, you could easily replace them. And today with all of our technology, we have ways of preventing the steel from rusting quite as quickly. So flat steels are usually covered in a white coating and it's usually tipped in some sort of uh, white tipping fluid or plastic or silicone or even Teflon. Wide heavy duty busks are often made with stainless steel, which is why you will often find them and they're the original silver color. They don't have the white coating over them because it's a similar type of steel that you would find in silverware today or your kitchen sink so the way that it's treated is more resistant to rust. 
And spiral steels are often galvanized, which means that they are covered with a very thin coating of zinc, which makes it a little bit more resistant to corrosion. However, even zinc can corrode over time and none of these treatments will prevent steel bones from rusting, you know, forever and ever. So uh, although it helps to prevent and prolong the process, you may even still sometimes find rust on white steel bones or stainless steel or st uh, spiral steel bones, especially if there is uh, not a very good coating process and they miss a couple of spots. Which is why many corset makers will say that if you do plan to immerse your corset in water for any reason, whether it's for washing it or dyeing it a different color or even, you know, just for a one-off photo shoot, you can get away with it. It's not like the bones are going to rest the very first time it touches water, but try to dry it as quickly as possible. And what I've done if my corset ever got wet is I would hang it up, uh, preferably in a warm place with a breeze. And um, if it is colored and the color is not very color fast, then I would keep it out of the sunlight because sunlight does have a tendency to fade colors. Now, if your corset is white, then maybe the UV from the sunlight will do some good because UV has uh, bleaching properties and it can also deodorize and naturally disinfect your corset. So if you do plan to wear a corset underneath your bathing suit or otherwise get it wet on a regular basis, there are five things that I would probably recommend. Firstly, don't get too particularly attached to your corset. So um, if you're going to swim in a corset or get it wet regularly, maybe it should be an off the rack corset. Two, if you plan for your corset to have multiple layers, then it's a good idea to make them the same fiber. So cotton strength layer and maybe cotton fashion fabric. Three, for steel bones, they should be coated galvanized, made stainless steel, tipped properly, otherwise treated in a way that is going to help prevent and prolong any sort of rusting or erosion. Four, your grommets should be iron free. And if you're using high quality grommets, they should be iron free anyways. Um, they should also be nickel free if you're also sensitive to that. I know a lot of people have nickel allergies. And generally speaking, a lot of grommets that you can get today are uh, aluminum or brass. I prefer the brass. It is an alloy of zinc and copper and it's very resistant to corrosion. And lastly, five, if you are a hardcore waist trainer and you insist on being corseted at all times of the day and through all situations, and you're also not allergic to any sort of latex or rubber, then consider a rubber corset. So I know that Kathy Young had a rubber corset made for her in a style of a swimming suit. I believe that was made by Bizarre Design. And I remember seeing uh, a TV segment with Michelle where she was wearing a rubber corset I think made from fantastic rubber. So because the rubber is, you know, waterproof and it seals in the bones, it is less likely to let the water in and ruin it. Uh, however, if you are allergic to rubber, then, you know, perhaps don't wear it. <laughs> And also remember that rubber is not a woven fiber, so it's not going to breathe the way that natural fibers do. So, you know, consider not wearing it for many, many hours in the hot, hot sun because it's not good for your skin and it would probably raise your body temperature. So these are my tips for prolonging the life of your corset if you're going to be wetting them on a regular basis. So I hope you found it informative. And if you have any uh, experience with this yourself, whether you are a corset owner and you wash your corsets on a regular basis, or if say you are a corset maker and you've had photo shoots where your models have had to wear your corsets underwater for any reason, I would love to hear your tips for uh, you know making your corsets last as long as possible. So leave me a comment down below and I will see you all next week for another video. Bye.